you can imagine why anybody would commit such heinous acts at all. In fact, we're here. Uh, Tess is joined with a mm -hmm. psychiatrist to kind of give us an idea as to why something like this might happen if there is such a reason. And that's a big question we've been talking about. Mike Walkers from the scene earlier said the puzzles, uh, the pieces of this puzzle already really coming together. It's not a matter of who, it's a matter of why. We know the suspect, 24 year old James Holmes, was a med student. He had no criminal record, only one traffic ticket, and yet he's accused in this terrible tragedy. Somehow, the guy described as quiet and shy, now the alleged gunman who called himself the Joker. This morning, Valley psychiatrist Dr. Michael Yasinski is here trying to give us into some insight into all of this and if perhaps Holmes's actions were even linked to the movie itself we've seen, seen that influence mm -hmm. uh, in different unfortunate uh, events let's talk first about the suspect sure you've been following the news obviously as right. we all have mm -hmm. give us some insight onto what someone like this is about who could do something like this possibly Sure. I think there's, you know, there's really separated into kind of two camps of ideas of what could have happened. And um, I think one is some people are looking at whether or not this is someone, a revenge type killing a la kind of Columbine, where this kid might have experienced some bullying, trauma, something in his past, in his childhood, that he is getting revenge for a violent killing with showing no remorse or apathy. and kind of he was totally knowing what he was doing and um, that's kind of one camp. Another camp which I, I do tend to believe is he did have some psychiatric illness, mm -hmm. a psychotic illness like schizophrenia which he is the right age in his early 20s to have what we call a psychotic break and he showed the signs and symptoms beforehand, the isolation, the social withdrawal and then this type of behavior um, can be consistent with a psychotic break and explain some of this. So you have two camps of people, whether or not you can have symptoms of both and both can be part of it, but mm -hmm. those are kind of the two, I think, explanations that we're looking at at this point. And I think a lot of people have been comparing him to Jared Lofner, the suspect in the Tucson shooting, mm -hmm. young white male going to school, sort of a loner, you know, as we learn more about the profile. Why is this happening? It feels like it's a similar suspect in both cases. Well, there definitely is similarities in, in these type of illnesses. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia and, you know, by far the majority of... Jared Lofner. Jared Lofner, okay. and the, by far the majority of presentations in schizophrenia is an uh, ongoing pattern of kind of social isolation, shyness, awkward behavior that then gets worse and worse to the point where, you know, you have this happening. So both cases, they did have some of the social isolation, withdrawal. He was a little more outward that he was a little more outspoken and got in some legal trouble before, but everyone's different. And, sure. and the main underlying feature is kind of the social isolation and then a relatively sudden personality change that in both cases, people commented that, you know, something just wasn't right after a certain point and they noticed a clear personality change. In this case, it's more the personality change of dropping out of school, mm -hmm. being socially isolated, clearly different than his history of a very high functioning, relatively social, normal, as far as we know, person. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to note his mother, according to police, when they interviewed her and told her, you know, we believe he's, a, and she didn't argue it. She's like, you probably have the right guy. Uh, before we go, let's talk about the impact of the movie. Sure. Uh, he came in as a Joker, obviously this much anticipated Batman uh, sequel. Is there that connection? Is our movies influencing this violence? I mean, there's no question movies are influencing, especially kids, vulnerable kids. Whether or not this case was one of it, I can give you an example of people that, you know, assuming is related to some kind of psychosis. Um, people's psychotic symptoms, which are delusions, are usually based on your surrounding environment. So take, for example, if this kid was a big Batman fan, mm -hmm. watched the movies, his delusions, once he loses touch with reality, would start to integrate with his surroundings. And if Batman movies was his thing, that's, that can start coming into his head as being a reality. So it's your surroundings that influence your behavior. So a violent movie, if you're watching a lot and then you get delusional, mm -hmm. that can turn, shape your delusion. So in this case, if you are susceptible, that definitely could contribute whether or not it's always a factor, we, you know, we don't know. And at this point, all we can do is wait and see as to what police eventually release as they continue their investigation. Right. Michael Yasinski, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight into this. And of course, you can count on 3TV to follow this tragic story all morning long. We'll be bringing you live reports from Colorado with Mike Walkus on the top of the hour and every half hour.